So let's look at this part now on chemical reactions. So definitely know how to tell uh, what are the signs of a chemical reaction occurring. So here in this case, we have, let's see. Oh, here we go. So these are signs of a chemical reaction. Remember, bubbles appearing, definitely a sign, and we saw that, especially with the calcium lab. Uh, precipitate, a solid forms in the bottom of the test tube, and I showed you all that at the bottom of the test tube, the calcium hydroxide, CaOH, that uh, formed when we did our calcium lab. A color change occurs, and we saw that when we added the phenolphthalein into the calcium mix, it, it actually turned like a pinkish color when we added that. And then the temperature either increases or decreases. And we saw both of those in the tablets at the beginning of the term. We saw how the temperature dropped when we added more tablets. And in the other one, the calcium lab, which we did recently, we saw that the temperature actually increased when we did that. And so light is given off sometimes. We didn't really see that in our labs, but if you think of like a firework uh, or lighting a match, that happens uh, in a combustion reaction, right? Which combustion just means burning. And then a change in smell or taste occurs. Something to be careful though is with the color change occurring. Remember that that, uh, like food coloring inside of water, that's not really a, a chemical reaction. That's more of a physical change. But if you do something like when you add a, a phenolphthalein, right, that is like a base indicator and we put it in that, that mixture, that solution that we made, we put the calcium and it turned that bright pink color, that is an example of a chemical color change, right? But like food coloring inside of just dropping it in water, that's just like painting the uh, water and that's just a physical reaction. All right. And then we also had right there, knowing the signs of a reaction, also know the parts of a chemical reaction. So we talked about those uh, here. You go right here uh, in the left side of the arrow. Remember we have the reactants and those are the substances that react, right? And then we have the arrow, which means you just yield this or you make this or you produce it. Right, and what it produces, the thing on the right side of the arrow are the products. So remember, reactants are the substances that react on the left side of the arrow, and products are the things that are produced on the right side of the arrow. Right, and then we have right here, uh, know the difference between an endothermic and exothermic reaction. So remember the, um, let me see right here, we have an exothermic reaction. Remember that an exothermic reaction just means that energy is released into the environment, and that's why we see the environment heat up. Right, so that is what, what, what we saw in the calcium lab that we did recently, and it was exothermic because it released energy which made the water hotter. And endothermic, kind of the opposite of that, right? It sucks up energy, it absorbs the energy, and so that would mean that it would make the temperature in the water colder, and that's what we saw with our uh, tablets in the water experiment. Right, so exothermic releases energy, endothermic absorbs energy. Right. And then we have um, know the difference between a coefficient and a subscript. Right. So just remember the coefficients are these large numbers here at the front of the, the atoms or the molecules. So again, here you have this six coefficient means there are six molecules of CO2. This coefficient means there's six molecules of H2O. And remember, if there is no, we'll see that in a second. This coefficient means there are six molecules of O2 oxygen. Right, but these little numbers here in the bottom right hand corner are subscripts. So oxygen has a subscript of two, hydrogen has a subscript of two, C carbon has a subscript of six, hydrogen of 12, oxygen of six, and this oxygen right here has a subscript of two. Right, so the subscripts are the little numbers at the bottom right hand corner. But just remember this if there's no subscript written, then you just assume there's a one there. Right, so the subscript, there's nothing here by the C, you just assume it's a one. Nothing here by this oxygen. So again, you just assume it's a one. And uh, same thing with the coefficients. If there is no coefficient written, then you just assume there's a coefficient of one, like in front of this glucose molecule of C6H12O6, right? And just remember, whenever you are balancing chemical reactions, you can only change the coefficient. You cannot change the subscript to try to balance them. And so then, uh, yeah, make sure you know the difference and then also know how to balance a chemical equation. So we'll just kind of go through the steps really quick, but make sure that you go through the practice problems and the videos to uh, review some more. So remember the first thing you're gonna do for that is, uh, you can only change the coefficients, right? That what we were, that's what I was saying a second ago. First thing, write down the problem, right? And for the final, they'll be written down for you, but check for the atom balance. So again, make sure you, you write all the, the atoms on the left side and write them in the same order on the right side and make sure you have the same amount on both sides. 
If you don't, then those are the ones you're going to have to change the coefficients to get them to balance out, right? That third a step, choose coefficients to balance the equation. And then always recheck them, right? Do the, put the coefficients there and then check them to make sure that you have the same amount of atoms on both sides. And then just remember, when you're balancing the equations, you can never change the subscripts, only the coefficients.